Today I really want keyboard shortcuts to click buttons for me and copy Python values to my clipboard. Streamit is a Python library to build beautiful web apps through Python code, but its simplicity comes at the cost of flexibility. You can't easily customize its behavior. Oh, you think so? But I'm a Streamit hacker. I like to break Streamlit to add very custom functionality. Let's create an empty file, add a title, buttons, and a session state counter displayed at the bottom of the app. I'll implement the necessary callbacks for the buttons to increment and decrement the count. With the components HTML method, I can display custom front-end code. It will be mounted within an iframe, so the code is supposed to live its life in the iframe sandbox and not interact with the Streamlit front-end code. There's no way of manipulating HTML and JavaScript from Streamlit, right? Streamlit, iframe, sandbox, breaking hack. Streamlit has lifted just enough iframe policies that I can use JavaScript to break outside of it. Let's create an external index.html file, read it in the Python script, and pass it into components.html with a size of 0. This will load the HTML snippet to ship custom JavaScript code outside the iframe sandbox. My plan is to attach keyboard event listeners to the main document and simulate button clicks in case of an event. Hey! Why aren't you saying anything? Well, I've never seen a hacker in action, so I'm listening. In the index.html file, open a new script block and immediately break out of the iframe. To prove I have access to the Streamlit frontend, let's give different colors to each button. Query the main document for all the buttons. By investigating the HTML code in my browser DevTools, I notice Streamlit buttons are contained in div blocks with the ST button class. Let's just check we got the buttons by logging them to the DevTools console. And there they are, in the console tab of DevTools. I can over them to check they are correctly defined. Now I can extract each button into a variable. I can query the button array by the inner text. And I can style them independently. Here's a red hue for the decrement and a blue hue for the increment. Time to attach my keyboard event listener. Perfect. I can now edit the counter through the arrow keys. Way more useful than using that stupid mouse. Why are you talking about hacking anyway? I just use my input or pipe clip and, and job done. <laughs> Well, he doesn't know. Streamlit operates in a client-server architecture. When I run a Streamlit app, it starts a Streamlit backend web server on which I connect with my browser. The server sends me a bunch of front-end code corresponding to my Streamlit widgets in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and starts a Python thread to run my Python code for each of my widget interactions. On my local machine, both front-end and backend code run at the same location, so the PyInput and PyPerclip would have access to my resources. But if I deploy on the cloud, my front-end client and back-end Python are separated, and neither PyInput nor PyPerclip would have access to my keyboard nor clipboard. My best bet is to hack Streamlit front-end to capture keyboard or clipboard events in the browser to manipulate widgets for me. Oh. Can you interact with the clipboard using front-end code? Now that I've entered the Streamlit front-end document, I can use any web API over it, like the clipboard API. I add a keyboard event for the enter key press to copy a Python variable into my clipboard. Back to my Python code, I also need to inject the session state counter into the HTML script as a string before rendering through components.html. And now I can freely manipulate my Streamit app through keyboard. Definitely a Vim user. Wait, I can copy in the clipboard, but why not read from the clipboard? That way I could deploy this in the cloud, silently steal password credentials from anyone playing with my app, hack into the bank account and get rich! Wait... Are you going to hack me through the Streamit app? Perfect, I got it. I'm gonna read text and then I find a way to send that front-end code back to the Python server and then... Ah, browser security. Well, at least I can manipulate the rendered Streamit HTML by injecting JavaScript from an iframe. If I can see the Streamit HTML, can I export the rendered HTML as PDF?